Hi everybody, this is your buddy and X from the Candid Frame. Now, when it comes to street photography, people often think about black and white photography. Because street photography has its roots in film, specifically black and white film, a lot of people think that true street photography is just in black and white. But the reality is, street photography can just effectively be done in color. And the great majority of the photographs that people create today with their digital cameras start start off as color and may be eventually converted over to black and white. And while that's a viable choice, I think that color should be a big consideration whenever you're making photographs. But I think sometimes people are not paying attention to color in the way that they should in order to really decide how they want to effectively use color in their photographs. And um, I'm using three images and we're going to go back and forth between how they're rendered in color and black and white to explore this idea a little further. First we have a shot by Jordan Barab. This was created with a Sony RX100 Mark III at 1 2,000th of a second, F11, ISO 1600. So here Jordan is taking advantage of some really hard direct sunlight. It creates this shaft of light through the street scene and renders a good amount of it into shadow and the other one into this bright hard light. So this kind of light is really good with respect to color because it, it makes the colors very vibrant and saturated. And you can really see that with the color of the folder, of the red sleeve of his t-shirt, his red backpack, as well with the food cart in the background where we have the greens, the yellows, the oranges of the signage of the cart itself. You can e even see how that the white car, uh, that white just pops out as a result of that light that's hitting it. If you look a little further in here, you can see how this, this white car is relegated to really dark gray, almost black, as a result of it being in shade and the exposure being biased for the highlights in this case. But this image revolves largely around the color. You know, those saturated colors have their punch. There's an interesting gesture with the man holding the uh, folder up, I guess, in a, in a way to shade himself from, from the sunlight. So it provides an interesting gesture, but it's the color that really makes this image sing. So let's take a look at how this picture looks as a black and white. Now, as a black and white, the image is completely transformed. Now the color isn't really a key element at all. Now what becomes the, the heart of the image is the gesture itself, is this man raising up his hand uh, to, to, in order to block the, the sunlight. The colors of the street guard in, in the background, his backpack, become really secondary to the shot. It really just focuses on this, largely because of the way the light is being reflected off this, off this folder, and it creates basically one of the brighter elements in the scene. And you can also see that because the color is no longer there, that this white car here becomes all the more prominent than it does in the original color image. One of the reasons for that is normally your eye is drawn to the brightest element in the frame, the whitest element in the frame. And in the black and white image, you're just seeing a scene in terms of tonality from bright white to dark black and everything, everything in between. When you remove the color from the scene, that, that whiteness, that brightness, becomes all the more important in terms of how the viewer experiences the photograph. Even though this is really at the heart of the image, this, this gesture, you can see how this white car ends up drawing our attention from this. It's good that it's in proximity to the subject, but it still is an issue in this particular in this particular composition that's rendered as a as a black and white. When we go back to the color image, you can see how the weight of the color, the reds, the purples, the green, have m more added weight to them. And as a result, that white front end of that car is still a little bit of a distraction, but it doesn't dominate the composition in the way that it does in the black and white. And that's a, that's a really big consideration that you have to make when you're, when you're making any kind of photograph where you're considering color and even the possibility of converting it over to a black and white. You have to think of color in itself as having substance and weight. Just like line and shape and light and shadow have a certain gravitas to them in terms of the composition, you have to think the same way with respect to color, especially when you know there are going to be competing elements in the frame that may detract the viewer from what you consider your main subject. 
Next, we have a picture by Shell Serkin. We have no XF data for this one. Um, here he is taking a picture of a reflection, the reflection of a wet sidewalk and two human figures, each of which is holding an umbrella, one red, one blue. Uh, it's a real wonderful abstract image in which he takes advantage of the reflection, um, the sort of texture that's created by the, the sidewalk because it's wet. Uh, we have some really interesting tonality that's happening, not just by the human figures that's, that we see here, but also the shape of the umbrella and the almost hazy blur of the, of, the, of the buildings, the architecture behind these two people, and the sort of texture that's implied uh, from the sidewalk onto the buildings and all the human figures here. It's a really interesting photograph. We see a lot of photographs of people taking reflections of things uh, in the water, like a puddle of water on the ground. Uh, but this takes it a little further in that shell here is using those two different color elements in a really interesting way. I really like the play of the red against the blue and then the other more subtle sort of greenish, dull gray, um, dull bluish tones that uh, are that inform the uh, the other areas of the composition. At the heart here, we don't have a big gesture other than the gesture implied by the color themselves. But look at what happens when we convert the image to black and white. With the conversion over to black and white, the whole color element here is gone. And not just the color element, but just a sense that these two figures here are carrying umbrellas. There's no sense here that this person has an umbrella. We just see their, their shadow here. So we don't even think that they're carrying anything in their hands. And here, uh, you see this sort of rounded shape, but it could be anything at this point. There's no sense that this is an umbrella of any color. All you see here are these feet, and you see their reflections here. So you just assume that this is something as a part of the background, not anything that's related directly to the subject matter. And you can see that because of the limited tonality that we have here, all of this just becomes sort of a, 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 a muddy, um, unclear area of definition. We see the texture. We see the line of the sidewalk itself, but that's it. We don't have anything to really sort of sink our teeth into. We get this area of high contrast here, but you know the, the, the viewer is really left to think, what am I supposed to be looking at? Why is this scene interesting? The lines and the shapes become much more prominent. They become much more important. But you don't have the satisfaction of the image that we see in color. Because if you go back to the original image, it's complete at that point. You have a clear idea of the presence of those umbrellas and that and those colors, the counterpoint between the, the red and the blue become the heart of the image. This area that is really weighted because of this area of contrast has something on which the viewer can settle their eye. They're not left wondering, well, what exactly am I supposed to be looking at? They see it right there and they respond automatically because even though we don't see the ribs of the umbrella, the shape and the fact that this is a wet sidewalk and obviously a rainy day implies that there are umbrellas. People read into it based on all those clues, which produces a really satisfying image because it, it begs the question that the viewer, him himself or herself, can look at, decipher, and come up with the final re result that, oh, this is two people holding umbrellas in the rain. It really is a wonderful shot and a wonderful way of taking, you know, taking the photographing of reflections on a rainy day to another level. It's really, really cool. Okay, here we have a shot by Byron Segres. Again, we don't have any XF data here. So here we have one of the many characters that exist on Hollywood Boulevard. We have this person here with this shocking blue wig, the long red fingernails, sort of lavender uh, top. We got this great gesture as they, they, I guess they have one hand on their phone and the other hand is sort of waving into the air as they look towards the direction of the camera. We have a blue sky here. We got this great shadow of the street light against the wall here. We have a person in a red jacket. But the heart of the image is this, is that shock of blue hair. It just 
pops out and those red fingernails are absolutely wonderful. So you can see how much of a draw that is to the scene because the figure here only takes up a third of the frame. The rest of it, two thirds of the frame is relegated to the street scene. But because this area has this area of high contrast between light and shadow, which makes this hair just stand out all the more, this area of the frame becomes all the more prominent. And you can see here that color is really a key issue here. It's not just the fact that this person is dressed the way that they are or that you have the gesture. It's that color that really becomes uh, sort of resonant in the image, especially since that blue sort of, you know, is reflected in the blue of the sky. But let's take a look at what happens when you see this as a black and white photograph. As a black and white photograph, it becomes a completely different shot. We still have the gesture, we still have the light and the shadow, but again, the, the impact of the shot is relegated more to not color, but the gesture and the contrast. You know, you see this hard light that basically cuts this person's face in half, light and shadow. This area behind them helps sort of define their, the outline of their frame and the body. The shadow of the, the, of the uh, stoplight here uh, was really key in the color shot and it still plays a role here, but I think it's a little more prominent now as a result of the fact that we don't have the color. And this red jacket that was an element in the, in the last shot means nothing in this composition. It doesn't serve as a counterpoint to anything else. It's just this sort of dark gray. The blue sky is just gray. So you have all this area here and the image is still weighted for that, but there's no really playing off of the blue sky and the red jacket with this person here. This just becomes sort of a, a background element in terms of establishing a sense of place, not really sort of a playful counterpoint to anything that possesses, that's possessed by the subject itself. And you can see here how the gesture here becomes all the more important to the success of the, the shot. It, it really is a good lesson in terms of the importance of gesture when you're taking a look at any, any of your photographs, whether or not you intend to use them as a color in black and white. But you know, converting them over to black and white allows you to analyze things like light and shadow, contrast, um, gesture, and really consider it outside of sort of the, the magnet that color can be. Because when we go back to the color shot, we re-experience this shot in a completely different way. The light and shadow, the line and shape uh, that are part of the black and white shot are still there. We don't lose that. But all of a sudden, you can see how much more weight the color of those nails and that hair has, oh, and the lips here, the red lips here, has to this has to the shot, and you can see how the red here and the blue here give you something to sort of play with, rather than just being, you know, just a bunch of space that's up occupying the rest of the frame. Uh, you're always looking for balance and interplay with different elements in the frame, particularly when they're when they're color. So when you're photographing, it's really important to think when you're thinking of color, is not just to merely think about your subject as just a colorful, uh, colorful subject matter, but how that color plays off of other things in the frame. We saw it with the other with the other shots. How color, not only of the subject but of background elements and foreground elements, really creates an experience for the composition, and that's something that's really important to keep in mind the next time you go out and shoot. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'm going to be in San Francisco in a couple of weeks for Street Photo SF. I'm going to be conducting a two-day workshop there. And uh, this week-long event has a lot of stuff related to street photography. So if you're in the Bay Area, I suggest you check it out. There'll be a link below in the show notes. And uh, in terms of the Candid Frame, the Candid Frame is a podcast in which I feature conversations about the work and the careers of photographers. Uh, you should check it out. We have about 418 interviews in the archive. You can go to thecandidframe.com and listen, or you can download the free Candid Frame app that's available for both Apple iOS and Android, and you'll have access to the entire archive for free. So thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.